This is your Goofy Uncle Tree Jam, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of Mass Effect 1. Last time we left off, we began trekking across the Pharaoh Skyway, and we encountered a lot of fighting with Geth forces along the way. But we went ahead and encountered a second group of survivors, separate from the Zeus Hope outpost. Among these survivors was Juliana Bainham, and she wants to know what has happened to her daughter Lisbeth who is still stuck at the Exogeny headquarters. So we've got quite a bit of work cut out for us, and we're only halfway across the Skyway. What I want to do is I want to talk to Ethan Jung real quick, and just get his feedback, his, perspect his uh, yeah, perspective on the situation. Excuse me. Yeah, please keep your fire to a minimum when you go to the Exogeny building. We want to minimize damage. Oh, and I must inform you that the company will not be responsible for any injuries you sustain while in our facility. It's a fun, upsetting gentleman, don't you think? Yeah, great guy. You're not much of a people person, are you? I like people. I just like them more when they're helping Exogeny profit. Someone needs to worry about the bottom line. I'm the only one left. Tell me about Exogeny. Please. Exogeny Corp is the premier engine of colonization in the new multi-system economy. And in conjunction with our core interests, exploration provides a broad investment base for shareholders. What are the company's core interests? Exogeny has a number of subsidiary companies in many different fields. The most profitable adapt alien technologies. There are many other industrial branches, but they aren't really relevant to Pharos. So think about Exogeny as basically a large, I guess you can say, intragalactical, intragalactical, intragalactic corporation. They're kind of like the Wayland Utani of this game. But let's go ahead and ask a little bit more about Ethan Jung's uh, personal self and get a little bit of perspective on why the Geth attack occurred. Tell me about yourself, John. <laughs> me? Yeah, I was sent here to do some routine estimations of the potential return on investment. The attack was certainly a surprise to me. I've been trapped here ever since. <sighs> Can't wait for the home office to get me off this rock. Do you have any idea why the Geth attacked you? None. We're scrambling to find anything of value. There's nothing here to warrant an invasion. There's barely enough here to warrant a colony. I think that's all we can get at Ethan, so let's go ahead and leave him be. I'm going. Uh, please be careful if you go to headquarters. We don't want any unnecessary damage to the facility. Ethan Jung has a little, um, you know, little character trait of being unlikable. Now, if you like Ethan Jung, I got nothing against you. I don't like him. I think the developers of the game pretty much made him unlikable, and you know they did a good job of it. So, good job. Okay, Rex, you gotta have to move, man. We talked about this before. Personal space does not include you standing in my way, so get over there. Thank you. The second person I want to talk to is Gavin Hostel right here, and he has an assignment for us. I was hoping you'd have a moment to speak with me. I've got a bit of a problem. What do you need? I need to retrieve some data. It's not a big job, but it pays well. Sounds easy enough. What's the catch? No catch, really. It's dangerous work, but not for someone like you. People are quick to assume we enjoy being in hazardous situations. It's not that bad, really. All you need to do is find my console at Exogeny headquarters and drop the data onto this OSD. It's that simple. I'll look around if I get the chance. I appreciate it. That data could be worth a lot of money. Of course, this all depends on getting out of here alive. Why work in the middle of nowhere if your skills are so useful? Maybe I've got a bit of the frontier spirit in me. That, and the alternative is a bit too secure for my liking. Freelancers don't have to worry about security as much, so long as we keep a low profile. Now the thing about Gavin Hossel, in Mass Effect 3 they actually threw in kind of a quick nod to this assignment. It's one of those things you kind of wondered, huh, this actually has an impact? Interesting. But yeah. Tell me about the data I'm getting for you. Plans for a few prototype mods? I'm a freelancer. Some of my mods are highly sought after. Let's go ahead and uh, bid farewell, and let's get headed up towards the Exogeny headquarters. Time to get moving. Just keep in mind what I said. But like I said, in Mass Effect 3, there actually is a little bit of something. If you do Gavin Hossel's assignment in this game, and you import this all the way to Mass Effect 2 and to Mass Effect 3, uh, you get a little something with... I'm not going to spoil it too much, but... Anyway, 
let's go ahead and just keep moving on. I do like to get some dialogue with the characters, but a lot of the um, you know generic NPCs down there, the security guards, and also the refugees, they pretty much have the same lines. It's little variations on the same line, just to give a little bit of ambience to the situation. Just give a little bit of context to uh, the situation that's going on at Pharos with the Geth attack, and a lot of um, you know people essentially turning into uh, I don't know. Basically, things are going to hell. Uh, the colony is suffering from the um, from all the damage being done, and so a lot of their dialogue is going to be pretty consistent along the lines of, "Oh crap!" And by the way, "Oh crap!" Uh, yeah, we could. I'm gonna pull up this way. Oh, that's right. I'm at level 60. I don't have to worry about this. So let's go ahead and just take him out with cannons. Uh, I did reach level 60 in my last video, so we're not going to be as concerned with taking out enemies on foot. Taking out enemies on foot is entirely optional at this point. We get no benefits whatsoever with regards to experience. And in fact, we can go ahead and take out enemies however we please. So let's go ahead and just take out these guys, whittle them down a bit. I'm going to try and get these little guys out of the way try to not get hit by those siege pulses would be great. The good thing about being level 60 is you can just go ahead and let loose. Uh, I do like a challenge every now and then, but once I get to level 60, it just gets really boring trying to uh, you know, gun them down on foot every now and then. It is fun, it's challenging, it adds a little bit of, um, you know, adds a little bit of difficulty to it, a little bit of enjoyment, but at a certain point, I do feel like that we need to keep things moving and keep things going along, so... Little expediency never hurt. Well, let's go ahead and keep moving up. Now, I think we have one more hostile, and it might be in this little space right here. Let's go ahead and get on foot and take this, um, this uh, remaining awesome Geth this. out. The Skyway is crawling with Geth. Package is secured. We're leaving now. All right. It looks like Exogenia tried to do some retrieval operation in the middle of this war. We'll see how well that turns out. I don't know if we ever get to meet the uh, the operators on that retrieval operation, but Clear. let me go ahead and get a little Metagel going, just so we can get Liar all healed up and ready to go. Pick up that Metagel and get some upgrade kits. <laughs> oh man, my voice is drawing out. Is drying out real bad right now. Kind of wish I had a glass of water with me, but oh well. I'm just gonna go ahead and just plug on ahead. And I think, I think there's another one of these little uh, inside spaces we can go into as we keep moving along the skyway. But this is pretty much the the last stretch of the skyway that we have to go through. And up ahead, I believe we have several Geth that have fortified a position. Suck down the We've got incoming Geth! Damn it! Shut down the comm! Hmm. Alright, hello, dialogue fire off there. Like I said, in this game, dialogue will fire off if you get to a certain point or, uh, you know, something happens. I try my best not to talk, not to talk over it and not to, uh, you know, jump the gun and skip out on certain pieces of dialogue, but sometimes, sometimes you just happen to make a mistake. You do what you can. Let me go ahead and shut these weapons down real quick. I'm gonna take this guy out. Alright, we got two more Geth back here. Oh, maybe three more actually. Let me go ahead and get a singularity going. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. Done deal. Perimeter secured. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and grab this crate right here. And I don't know, but the the transmission that we received suggests that... Oh, I don't know if this is the uh, people who were trying to recover something for Exogeny or not. I'm guessing they were probably killed earlier, but I don't know. I just don't know. 
first time I played the game, I kind of thought that these people that were lying dead in the tunnel, I thought they were actually the people who were killed while trying to retrieve something. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's really the case, but, you know, a little curiosity. I'm kind of wondering how much um, Bioware put in as a... Uh, to keep in-game events pretty consistent. I'm not sure how up-to-date th up they are on, you know, like, stuff that happens, ambient dialogue, ambient events. I'm the kind of person that if I play a game, I will get amused by just the smallest, the smallest details. Just a little bit of immersion, just get me going, uh, keep me appreciating the game. Let me go ahead and get this guy out. There we go. Alright. But yeah, I mean, I do like my details. I like to see the, um, the developers put in a lot of work in making the game as immersive as it possibly can. And I just dodged that rocket by basically the hairs of my chin. Look at that. But yeah, every little bit counts, and I think that... It's nice to see little nods. It's nice to see in the in the um, sequel games that the developers account for whether or not you did a certain thing a certain way. This, this idea of importing profiles from the previous game all the way to the next game, the Mass Effect series, has actually been... One of my favorite parts of the Mass Effect series, just seeing your decisions play out and have consequences. But anyway, let's go ahead and take out this last armature just real quick. Hey, you know what? Oh, look at that. Did you see that? That shit was great. I'm going to need to put that shit in replay. That, w that was glorious. Oh, yeah. I'm just go ahead and knock him down. Yeah, it kind of feels cheap doing this, but, you know, enemies in Mass Effect 1 do not like to fight fair. See what I mean? Look at that guy. He got pissed off. But he's dead now. Let's go ahead and move on. Yeah, and I'm sorry if my voice sounds really raspy right now. It's actually 4.13 a.m. where I am. I probably should be asleep. But I figured it's, it's um, basically a Saturday morning. I just wanted to go ahead and do something because I got really bored. Didn't feel like it. Didn't feel like going to sleep just yet. Just want to get a little Mass Effect gaming in before I hit the bed, hit the um, hit the mattress. But I think this is pretty much it. We are at the end of the Skyway, and now we have nothing left to do but embark on the rest of this journey on foot. Before we do. Let's take out some of these guys for the Mako. The Geth have moved in rather quickly. What are they up to? There's no point to this unless they're looking for something. Alright. Let's take out these guys and we can go ahead and move on in. This is such a good thing about being level 60 sometimes is if you get really tired of fighting the same enemy over and over again on foot. You always have the option of just going back in the Mako and just saying, Fuck it. I'm gonna blow him up. Okay. En route. Let's go ahead and embark on foot. I believe we have two hostiles up on the... Up on this raised uh, terrace area of some kind. Let's go ahead and take them down. Oh, we got ourselves a rocket trooper, huh? Okay. And they are down. Area secured. Now, just a little something I want to show you guys real quick. If you see this barrier right here, our weapons cannot touch a field like this. We'll need another way in. This area is essentially closed off up until you um, uh, take care of a certain thing later on. It's this is going to be your exit towards uh, leaving this place. That area is blocked off for right now because the Geth have actually installed, I think, some inner barriers that close off access to certain parts of the compound. And the Geth are pretty entrenched here. So from here on out, we've got a pretty tough fight coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, man. Yeah, I really need to work on not trying to record at 4 in the morning. That'd be a good idea. But over here, you can see that our radar is, or sorry, our motion sensor is still jammed. And it's actually because we have a Geth armature right here. You cannot, yeah, you really can't see it, but it's behind this wall. 
what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get my followers to move back uh, just so they're not in this narrow uh, choke point. I sense trouble. Now this armature is actually folded up, but the moment you start... F now you can actually trigger this armature through two ways. You can start shooting at it, or you can go ahead and open this container. The moment you open it and leave, the armature will activate and engage you. So, I'm going to go ahead and just do it this way. This strategy is not recommended. It is not recommended for you at any point because this armature can one hit kill you if you have subpar equipment, so keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, this thing, yeah. Oh, okay. It's gonna fire? It's gonna fire. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's go ahead and just make sure weapons are offline for this guy. Let's get Rex and Liar to rally back to my position. So I can get their I can get their gunfire helping me out a bit. And because I can, I'm gonna get Liar to lift this thing in the air. And look at that. Toasty. Okay. Now, there is a bit of a bug, I think. If you were to take this malfunctioning object and open it up. Or maybe not. Huh. Sometimes I've noticed that whenever you uh, take down the armature and then open the object, the armature will respawn, which is very strange. But it's not happening now. Uh, maybe I missed something, or maybe it's just something different, I don't know. But I've noticed in the past that the armature will respawn for some reason. I don't know why. A one-way trip down, Commander Shepard. But food for thought later. Alright, now as Liara mentioned, this is pretty much a one-way uh, one trip. So once we head down here, we're pretty much committed. Let's go ahead and move on in, and we've got a cutscene coming up right now. So I'm going to keep quiet. I'm so sorry. I thought you were Geth, or one of those Baron. You're safe now. But why were you here in the first place? It's my own fault. Everyone else was running, and I stayed to back up data. Next thing I knew, the Geth ship latched on, and the power went out. I was trapped. I, I tried to get out, but the way was blocked. We'll get you out as soon as we find out what the Geth are after. It's not the Geth, it's the energy field they put up. They don't want anyone else getting access to the... I'm here for the Geth. It's very important that I find out what they're after. I don't know for certain, but I'm guessing they're here for the Thorian. What's a Thorian? It's an indigenous life form. Exogeny was studying it. What else can you tell me? Do you know where I can find this Thorian? I... I might be able to, but not with those geth crawling around everywhere. Look, we need to get out of here, past that field. Do you know how we can shut it down? No, not exactly. But I think the geth ship is powering it. I've noticed the geth laying power cables everywhere. You could follow those cables, but there's geth all over the place. So we have found Lisbeth Bainham, and she's actually spilled the beans on something called the Thorian. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more information on this thing. Tell me what you know about the Thorian. I really don't know that much about it. I think it's some kind of plant being. I know it's very old. Thousands of years, even. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a research assistant for Exogeny. I came here with my mother. I don't even know if she made it out alive. She's with some others from the colony. She's safe for now. She's alive? Oh, thank God. I thought I was the only one left. Please, Commander, just... Get that field down so I can see my mother again. Why do you think the Geth would be interested in the Thorian? It's just a plant. I don't know why the Geth would care. Exogeny was studying it, but I don't think they found anything special. I think that's all we can get out of Elizabeth for now. Let's go ahead and move on. You stay put. I'll go open some doors. Oh, here. Take my ID. This should get you past any locked doors. Good luck with that field. 
Okay, now we unfortunately cannot rest because this cutscene, once it completes or once this dialogue completes, we get thrown into close quarters combat with a bunch of uh, very, very hungry Varen. What we're going to have to do in order to survive this one is we're going to have to try and maintain our distance. What we're going to have to do is I'm going to try and get... Oh boy, Rex is going to get chewed up. So let me go ahead and get Rex's immunity up. I'm going to get my immunity up. And Liara is going to have to get a singularity going. Hmm. I think there's... Where are they? Oh, there they are. <laughs> it's almost too easy. Perimeter secured. Yeah, it kind of almost feels unfair, but the first time I remember playing this, you know, if you're not fully leveled up, you don't have good gear. I mean, these little guys could just tear your squad apart. So it really comes down to you to use biotics, maybe use some damping to slow them down a little bit just so you can give yourself a few seconds to back away. But I really don't have any tips for this. It's basically a um, try not to get surrounded and try and lead them in a path where you can gun them down pretty easily. And remember, I don't know if you can do this without the um, combat exoskeleton, but you can melee butt them. Uh, just get in quick, melee butt one of them, and then keep backing up. Yeah. You know, I don't have any tips for how to do that um, flawlessly because you're probably going to take some damage and you might have a, a squad mate that goes down. So, really it's uh, just best of luck. But I think this is pretty much it. I'm going to have to cut the video here because we've gone on long enough. We found Lisbeth Bainham, but we have to go ahead and take down the barrier unless um, we want to stay in here. That barrier is keeping us from exiting this compound, so our priority is going to be dealing with the Geth. But for right now, I just want to say, oh, hang on, there we go. Thank you for joining me, this is Great Tree Jam, and I just want to wish you a happy day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you may be in this universe or the next. And I'm going to go ahead and just get straight to sleep, because I'm tired. But uh, I hope to see you in my next vid, guys, so stay tuned. Until then, bye.